started the new year with a green thumb and really want to get gardening, here's a few things you can actually get sowing now. Hello folks, uh, well we are in January and if you're anything like me, uh, as soon as we get there we tend to think spring is just around the corner. Of course it's not and actually uh, we've still got most of the winter to go but if you are in the northern hemisphere and you're like me, you just want to start growing and preparing for the season ahead. And if you're looking for a dedicated list of seeds that you can sow in uh, January, then check out the link here uh, which is uh, seeds to sow this month but also a playlist uh, that you can use month by month to find out what you can sow in your garden. Now the main thing we're battling at this time of year are the cold and the hours of daylight. Now the cold has become really unpredictable over the last uh, few years and certainly in the UK the winter season um, down south is not how it used to be decades ago. We can't uh, necessarily believe that we're going to get three months of coldness and snow and frost because there's been some uh, winters when I've been here that we've not had a hard frost at all. Um, so that means that actually as long as you protect your um, plants um, in a greenhouse or under a cloche or a cold frame or something like that. If you choose cold tolerant um, varieties, you can actually start growing fairly early on. The other thing is the hours of daylight. Now that is predictable and that's gonna be my and your biggest kind of hurdle uh, for those of us now in the Northern Hemisphere wanting to start sowing. Because until February kind of 14th, 15th, the hours of daylight aren't really sufficient to get plants going properly. Now you can of course start to germinate early and I'm going to today and you can start stuff in January and they will germinate. Um, but you just run the risk of A, uh, the hours of daylight not being long enough so you can start to get straggly plants and B, because there isn't a day enough daylight, your germination rate and your seedling growth rate can be fairly small. That's not necessarily a problem but it does mean that they are at greater risk of pests and diseases because you've got little plants that are fairly weak um, and they can be attacked easily by diseases and also it gives longer for those snails and slugs to kind of find them and eat away at them. Now the other thing that's also affecting me personally this year is that the garden out there is not going to be my growing garden for this year because we are obviously picking up sticks. So I am not direct sowing anything and things like aubergines and peppers that I would put in in the house under heat now, I'm not because will be moving and I don't want to sort of start things growing um, under heat that I then have to take somewhere else and keep under heat. So I'll be um, putting most things into pots, trying to transplant and um, build up nice little seedlings to pop out onto the farm because we're going to be moving to the farm sort of at a stupid time. So we're moving in March, um, April, March time. March, April? April, March. March, April time. Um, and that means we're going to be already into the growing season. Um, so then setting up a market farm in May is really not ideal because you've already missed two, three seasons, uh, two, three months of sowing. Uh, so I'm going to do as much sowing as I can here and we're going to just transplant all of these little seedlings up to our polytunnel once it's up um, so we can actually get some stuff into the ground this year and growing. So what have we got? Um, so I'm putting in some little uh, mini savoy cabbages. They can just go, they don't need to be individually done, they can just be popped into this tray. Um, radishes, I'm just going to do a few drills of radishes along here. This obviously is a tiny uh, cell, it's not going to fit many uh, radishes in, but I've never grown them in a tray before. So I'm going to give that a go, just so that I can get some radishes to eat here at home really. Um, some cosmos in this tray, some hollyhocks in this tray. Um, again, I want to create some uh, some plants for the farm, but also some mini plants so that we can actually go to farmers markets and things with uh, plants to sell because that's another income. And actually up here, I've got some nice little hollyhocks. They are in desperate need of potting up. You can see the roots are coming through, but they're nice sturdy little plants um, that we grew last year. And these are gonna be going in the lookout. So at the top of the top of um, the pit, we have the area where we've got uh, we're going to have an ornamental wildflower meadow. Um, so it's going to be longer grasses and some wildflowers, but also some ornamental flowers popped in there as well to boost diversity and pollination and nectar. Um, and these 
hollyhocks are going to be part of that. Um, so that's going to be in there. And then I'm putting in a few carrots. They obviously need to go into deeper trays because they're going to create their root systems and go down. I'm not going to sort of um, plant these out. They're going to, I'm just going to grow them in these pots. So I won't be putting very many in, but I'm just going to see how many I can get. And then finally, I've got a few sweet peas in here they're the last ones i've literally tipped all of my packets out so i've got these very few last seeds and i'm going to get them on the go too i am also joined by silkies in the greenhouse because it has been abysmally muddy uh, we've had such a wet one of the wettest seasons um towards the end of 2019 ever and their coop was just gross and i've got nowhere else to put them so i've brought them in here um they're at night, they go into the poultry coop here, and I just shut this. So these are excellent. If you can get hold of poultry coops anyway, it's ideal. But these just slide across, and I tie this. Um, so they come up here. Oh, I come up here, and I shut them in there at night just because the fox, because I remember Bo came crashing down the garden and took out this glass panel. Um, so I just want to... Obviously, this is in place, but I just want to secure them a little bit more. And then in the daytime, they just come down and roam around on the floor. Um... They're much happier. They've got actually more space um, in here. Um, and I'm probably just gonna keep them in here for a couple of months really until we move, keep them nice and dry uh, and happy. I, I do really wanna bring the cockerel in to get some fertilized eggs, but the cockerels, since fireworks night, the cockerels have been horrendous. They have just been crowing all night long so badly um so i've had to start i had because the uh, it got dark um and the hours of daylight the hours of daylight were kind of shortened i was leaving them out in the coops because i was thinking well they're not crowing at night so it doesn't matter but they started crowing all night regardless of whether it was sunny or dark so i've had to start bringing them all back in again so i don't want to have to come down here also and pick up another rooster um, and take him inside so it's better to leave him with the pack and then I will bring him when we move to the farm I'll pop him in with these ladies and we'll start our silky breeding program up again Planning any uh, garden is hard enough and you're growing season ahead and it does take quite a lot of effort just to kind of sit down, work out what you want to grow, work out what you want to eat and then certainly if you are also planning to go to market, working out what you're going to be your cash crops and what people are actually going to want to buy from you. Um, but when you're moving halfway through the year, especially that kind of that early season year uh, when we want to be putting and starting our veg beds off. Um, the logistics are rather complicated. So most of the stuff that I'm starting here in pots will be literally just for my own consumption. I will probably do some quick cash crops once I get to the farm. So then we'll, I'll throw in some, you know, I'll have the summer months. Uh, so I'll be able to do some very fast carrots. I'll be able to do some radishes. I'll be able to do beans. Um, I hope that I'll get a load of pumpkins and squashes on the go because they've got a long uh, maturity season and they will be available towards the end of the year. So I need to look at kind of crops that I can put in May, June, July to get a cash crop later in the year. So what I'm growing now is really just to get my green fingertips going again and feel like I'm doing something, um, you know, I've talked many times about battles with mental health and things and, and gardening is something that helps me so I need to do some gardening just for myself uh, just to feel like I'm doing something and also it helps um, start the clear out of the garden because we've got to clear this entire garden we're gonna get a skip I'm quite scared though how much there is to do we're not taking the greenhouse because it's knackered we're not taking the shed uh, because it'll just be too much but all the coops have got to come down I'm gonna have to rip out these raised beds and put, quickly put in a lawn um, and just there's a lot of stuff that I need to sort through, old pots, um, things that I've hoarded over the years because I thought I might use them but realistically do I want to pack them up and take them to the farm where they're just going to sit again? No, so I'm just going to chuck it all. Um, so there's a lot of work to do 
But if there's some stuff growing, that makes me a little bit happy. So I'm going to crack on, get these seeds sown, give them a bit of a, a mist spray to just dampen that soil. I don't want it to be really, really wet and I don't want them to be sitting in wetness, especially this time of year, because it's cold and it's not going to evaporate. So just a mist spray across the top. And because I'm coming down to sort out the girls, I'll be here every day so I can mist spray and I'll remember rather than start all of this and then forget. Uh, if you've liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing if you are on Facebook. Please come across and join us at Brimwood Farms Community Group. Uh, as I say, I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to leave you with the silkies because they're really, really cute uh, and they're nice to watch bundling around. 